This all started back in 1965. Echo Bodine will be the first to tell you that the 60s were a different time. Growing up, psychic powers were unheard of in her Minneapolis home. It wasn't until she was a teenager that Echo's strong intuition gave her mother no choice but to search out a psychic that might better understand what was happening with her daughter. The kind of spooky part was my mom called this woman and she said, hi, uh, hi, my name is Mae Bodine. And the psychic said, yes, Mrs. Bodine, I've been expecting your phone call. It wasn't a calming, reassuring conversation that we were hoping for. Um, really, it was, it was so foreign to the way that we were living. I mean, we were Presbyterians. We went to church every Sunday. We didn't grow up thinking about psychic things. The shy 17-year-old girl would eventually have no choice but to come out of her shell. And it all started with a homework assignment from that psychic who told Echo she needed to get home to heal her father's headache. Liz, I put my hands on his head and I, I, I was just really nervous, like, well, what's gonna happen? And then they started to tremble and this heat started to just pour out of my hands. And, and then they stopped, it stopped all by itself. So I took my hands off and my dad said, well, I'll be darned if my headache isn't gone. Echo still knows how crazy it all sounds and realizes when she tells her story that there will always be skeptics. It's why she also chooses to talk about the struggles she's been through too. And you've always, Echo, been so open about your story. Yeah. Has that been difficult? You know, that's one thing that you learn in AA is that if you're open and honest about your story, more people can relate to you and you can reach more people, help more people. Unmarried, Echo got pregnant in her early 20s. She says at the time it was a different decade and she felt she had no choice but to give her son up for adoption. It led to a severe depression and an addiction to drugs and alcohol that Echo eventually sought help for. All the while, she experienced a constant struggle with the gifts of seeing, hearing, and sensing that Echo says were only becoming stronger. That was probably the hardest thing for me was coming out of the psychic slash healer closet and telling people that I had these gifts because I wanted people A, to like me and B, to think of me as normal. And so at 29, I hung out my little psychic shingle and started telling people what I did and, um, and that started the whole career. That career has taken Echo around the world, and recently she's opened her own healing center, hosting monthly psychic fairs to give others the chance to share their gifts. Why did you decide to open a center like this? Because there's really a need. Um, gosh, there's a big need for this. A lot of people are doing alternative health care now. Uh, a lot of people are trying to understand their intuition and psychic abilities. And it just seemed like the perfect thing to do to open up a place where uh, people could come. And people do Very come. Good. When we Very visited, welcome, the place welcome. was packed. Enjoy. We got a taste of the passion so many have for trying to better understand themselves. So what we do is we have you put your hand on a biosensor hand plate, and that pulls information actually from the energy field around your body, which is called your aura. That aura shows up in just a few seconds after taking a quick picture. The read for you is that when you speak to people, you are speaking your truth, and you truly mean what you say. Which gets what me you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> which there is that side of intense red. <laughs> so your past, present. There are also vendors like Eric Earl, trained to read what are called angel cards to anyone who stops by. So 2014 looks awesome for you. I'm a little, I'm a little jealous. <laughs> what do you say to the people who watch this or who are looking at this and say, you know, there's no way? I totally get that. Um, I used to be skeptical myself until I had an experience with a reader who, who told me things that there is just absolutely no way that they could have known. Wes Hamilton is a master numerologist. This measures the energy of the number, not the sum of the number. He gave me some good insight when I visited. So you talk at people instead of with people? Which is a good number for this number one, because you like to have it up. And I like to ask a lot of questions. You do. And not talk about myself, huh? No one knows who you are even though you know what everybody else is doing. Ah. To all of them here, Echo has helped to make this all real. We owe her a lot. It's been great. You look up to her in a lot of ways? Absolutely. She's a great mentor. She's an amazing teacher. Um, yeah, I, I can't say enough good things about her. 
Echo has also authored a large number of books she hopes will help people even more. And so yes. this, is, this is number 11? Yes, it is. Yes. So what happens when we die? A psychic's exploration of death, heaven, and the soul's journey after death. This is heavy stuff. It is heavy stuff. It is. Um, the reason I wrote the book, though, is that in my work as a healer, a lot of families have asked me to come to the hospital and help their loved one die, all right, or be with them, be with the family. While death is something she knows people don't want to talk about, Echo knows firsthand how important it is to do so. They're very uncomfortable about it, and that, that has to change because what I have found also is with people that can really openly talk about it, the whole process goes a lot easier for everybody. She went through it recently herself with her own mom. After struggling to finish the book, it became easy after Echo watched her mother pass peacefully. So when people ask you, is there a heaven? Yeah. What do you tell them? Oh, absolutely. Oh my gosh, absolutely there is a heaven. Echo believes there is still a lot of work ahead. And after all that's happened, she can't help but think back to that conversation when she was just a teenager that forever changed her course. She said, I would be a well-known psychic, that I would travel around the world, I would teach others how to develop their abilities, that I would teach others how to channel uh, healing, that I'd write several books and be on radio and TV. I was, at that time, a very shy 17-year-old senior in high school. And um, I told the psychic, I said, okay, two things. First of all, I don't have any of this stuff. And secondly, I don't want any of this stuff. I just want to have a nice, normal life. And her response was, you can have a nice, normal life in your next life. In this lifetime, you are here to develop your gifts and then teach others how to develop theirs. It's a course Echo is not only comfortable sticking to, but now excited to do so. You know, it's all turned out really well. I, I'm very, I'm a very grateful person. Life to the Max is brought to you by Life Touch, photography for a lifetime.